Welcome to chapter two. I'm glad you've made it to this point in our course. You know, chapter two is an exciting chapter because we uncover one of the most important things in any one individual's lives. Can you guess what it is? It's you. That's right. Chapter two looks at the self-concept. You know, philosophers from ancient times have looked at three particular questions. In fact, these philosophers suggest that there are three questions that every human being seeks to find the answers to during their lifetime. The first question is, who am I? I mean, really, who am I? And the second question that we seek to answer is, why am I here? What is the purpose of my existence? And finally, the third question that these philosophers suggest is, who are these other people around me? And how do I interface in their worlds? You know, chapter two will really dive deep into these perspectives and help you answer these very questions, all in a hope, all in an effort to help you become other-oriented during your interpersonal reactions. This is going to be an exciting chapter. As I mentioned, chapter two looks at the self-concept. And for foundational purposes, let's take just a second to describe what that self-concept is. And certainly you're gonna read a lot more about it in chapter two. You know, the self-concept is really this. It's a subjective description of who you think you are. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? And I say subjective because it's your perception of who you are. There's one interesting thing about the self-concept though, and that is it's constantly evolving in so much as to say your self-concept changes over time. As you get to know characteristics and qualities that you never knew you had, perhaps, guess what? Your self-concept changes. As you interact with different people, guess what? Your self-concept changes. As you begin to obtain other material things in your world, guess what? Your self-concept changes. Matter of fact, there are sort of these three perspectives of the self-concept that I want to highlight for you in just a couple of, for just a couple of seconds, really, and I ask you to read about these more in detail in chapter two. They are the spiritual self, the material self, and the social self. The spiritual self seeks to define all of those thoughts and feelings and personal values and your belief systems, those, sort of those core elements of what make you who you are based on your spiritual side. Why it is you believe what you believe? And of course, it's obvious, right? The spiritual self help guides your subjective description of who you are, your self-concept. The second area is your social self, and the social self is reflected in the interactions you have with everybody in your world. You know, who you are with your friends might be different than who you are with a family member, maybe different than who you are with a coworker, and certainly probably different than who you are with an acquaintance, say, standing in line at a grocery store. Those different social hats, so that social self of who you are helps to make up your self-concept as well. And finally, the material self. The material self is everything that you own. Everything that you own that helps to define and make who you are. And this is everything, everything, including your own body, what you do with your body, how you, how you shape your haircuts, what you choose to put on your back for your clothes. This also has to do with your material possessions, right? Your home, your car, etc. All of your possessions. These things, these material things really strive and help to define who we are. So between the spiritual self, the social self, and the material self, these three things in working together help to define our self-concept. So how does your self-concept develop? There are several different perspectives that you're going to read about in chapter two, including the looking glass self, uh, this notion of we identify with the associations within groups, this idea that the, the roles that we assume, be it a mother or father or child, et cetera, help to define who we are. There are self labels that help us uh, de define our self concept. And of course, your personality is a large driver of defining, helping to define anyway, your self concept, this notion of nature versus nurture. In fact, in chapter Chapter two, you're going to read about the communa biological approach and how that interfaces with the nature versus nurture perspective. How our self-concept develops. Please read about it in chapter two. There are several other areas you're going to read about in chapter two, and I want to take just a second to preview those areas for you to kind of build up some excitement. You know, one of the areas you're going to read about in chapter two beyond the self-concept is this notion of your self-esteem. I know you've heard that, for, that terminology before, self-esteem, but you're going to learn how your self-esteem impacts 
your relationship with others. You're also going to look, about, look at how the self-concept and how self-esteem impact your feelings of need. You're going to look at the need for inclusion, the need for control, the need for affection, and how those needs are met in interpersonal encounters so long as you have a good sense of self and who you are. You're also going to look at the world of self-disclosure. Now in chapter two, we're going to very, very briefly touch on self-disclosure. And particularly, you're gonna look at the Johari window of self-disclosure. Really fascinating way of describing self-disclosure and it really kind of lays a foundation uh, for self-disclosure in this course. A little bit later in the semester, we're gonna tackle self-disclosure on a much, much deeper level. And finally, the self and communication social style. You're gonna look at assertiveness and responsiveness and how those two things interface with one another to help you become more other-oriented. Now that you have a preview in the chapter two, I invite you to go ahead and get started. Go ahead and check out the chapter two discussion board prompt first. That way, as you're reading chapter two, you can get a good idea of, of how you're going to respond to that initial chapter two discussion board. Then go ahead and post your response to the chapter two discussion board after you've read chapter two, of course. And finally, go ahead and respond to your colleagues' postings to that board as well. Remember, you're earning points for this too. Next, I'd like you to start preparing for the chapter two quiz. After you've read the chapter, Check out some of those exercises at the back of the book in the workbook section. In fact, exercise 2.2 is a for your review exercise. And I think after completing that exercise, you'll be much better shaped to take the chapter two quiz. Have fun with this chapter. I hope you learned all about you.